It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. Vibe, vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joel Bayer and I'm joined by the one and only Mr. Stephen Housen and Farrah Williams. And today it's a special Vibe with Five episode. That's right. We're looking at the Women's Football Summit celebrated. Massive shout out to EA Sports. Steve, take it away. I'm going to talk to Farrah. But before we start talking about playing the Olympics, getting an MBE for services to women's football, before we talk about all of the accolades, I want to take it all the way back to when you first laced up a pair of boots. And I want to talk to you about how that has changed for women picking up the game today and what was your experience when you first started? Mate, you're challenging me. I'm old now, I'm 38. I've got so many years to think back, 30 odd years. Um, it's changed massively, the women's game. Uh, I remember as a young girl growing up on an estate in Battersea, um, in terms of opportunities or knowing visibility of any female team, I didn't know anything about it. I went you to youth boys. club. Yeah, I played with boys on the estate, went to youth club. Started up little five-a-side teams with the boys, uh, went to tournaments with lads um, until, I, until I got a little bit older, so closer to 10. And uh, I got some of the, the girls then to start a youth club team, played five-a-side with them. Um, but I got recognised at a tournament playing for Fulham. Uh, sorry, I was playing for my local youth club at a tournament and Fulham picked me up. It was at Dover House Road, so towards Rahampton Way. Um, and I got asked to come along to a trial. I was underage, so I was 11 trialling for the under-14s. Anyway, they selected me. Little did I know I played for a whole season as a ringer. So, so my, name, my name at the time was Natasha. Um, and then obviously being, yeah, mad, right? So then obviously being a Chelsea fan, I used to go to every game, every home game, um, the local away game, so the local derbies away. And then we seen a little advertisement for Chelsea trials under-14. He's still underage at this as well. Still no, really now, I'm like, now I'm 12, so I'm able, eligible for under-14s. So I went for a Chelsea trial. There was a school pitch at Felton so I used to have to get bus train another bus to get there on a Friday night pay my five pound subs but I'm one of four kids uh, my mum bringing us up so having to pay five pound you know so don't you bearing in mind my travel so that was expensive food kit boots shin pads five pound a, a week for training signing and on five fee. pound a game you're signing on fee Chelsea was charging to play that yeah it was just local community uh, it was yeah it was actually our youth club um our, our youth worker that run our team at the time at Chelsea um so it, it cost a lot of money and, and I, I guess as a kid I didn't understand that but when I look back on it and seeing how hard my mum had to work to enable me the funding I needed to play I'm obviously really grateful for that um and realize now as an adult how difficult it was for her to provide you know what I needed I remember though it wasn't it wasn't cheap as I said and I'd, I'd have one pair of boots that would last me three or four years, and at the end of three or four season, years, well, at the end of every season, we spray paint them. I needed, I needed. So I had to spray paint them, Joe. Back then, we didn't have money for that. So I needed, I sprayed I needed two, three boots for the season. Well, this is this is know? what's funny because it's mad because I actually carried that on throughout my career. So even when I become a sponsored athlete of Puma, and they'd send like they'd send a new brand every three, four months, I would still want to wear the same one boot for the whole year, and I, I think it's just something that I got used to. Like I just wear them until they're till they run dead, till the moulds are like astroturfs. But that's just what I was used to. Um, but yeah, the spray painting was pretty cool. I had white boots, green, gold. So <laughs> I actually didn't mind the whole spray painting uh, every season. Become a thing with me and my two pals, so it was pretty cool. So when did you start shining then for Chelsea? Because obviously, you know, you're coming up through the ranks and stuff. When was it apparent? It's Chelsea, but it's, it's a grassroots team. If you're paying subs, this isn't an academy. Yeah, no. It, well, they didn't have an academy. Hope Power until she got the England job and a... Uh, she then formed an under-16, under-18 England team. They then had local, then they had uh, academies. Um, and that's when Chelsea got one. But I, was, I wasn't until I was under-16. So under-14, yeah, pretty much grassroots. Um, I think it was in my last year of under-16, these Centre of Excellence come into place in the women's game. Um, and it was through Hope Power, it was, you know, her that did all the groundwork to get, I think at the time, maybe eight teams um, involved in that. And obviously we was training twice a week. We didn't have to pay for the... Uh, C CEO at the time or Centre of Excellence whatever it's CRE at the time um, so yeah that become more affordable as I got a little bit older um, but yeah really early on paying weren't easy man where did you take that from under 16s under 18s to then playing first team football I jumped I jumped in, in terms of so when I was at Chelsea I played into under 14 and when I got to 14 I played first team football so I'd train on a Friday night with the first team and play on a Sunday with them. About wow. 14. 14. 
but the Centre of Excellence would train twice a week. And because I was still eligible for the 16, so I could get extra training, I'd obviously attend the training twice a week with them and play on a Saturday. So I pretty much was then training three times a week, play on a Saturday for the 16s, and then play on a Sunday for the first team. What were, what were some of the things that they were saying about you? Because obviously you were a special player. On the estate, my sister used to try and come in the cage. She didn't survive. Yeah. <laughs> I used to survive, which told me that actually I might, I, I've got to be okay because like I'm talking to boys, it weren't just boys of my age. Like my big brother was there, like his pals and all the pals and that. I, I mean, even some of the lads I talk to now, they were like, oh, do you remember when you that little girl? And they were grown men, but you've got to survive in there. But it taught me everything I needed to know about the game. When you talk about coaches, they couldn't have taught me half of what I learned in that cage and how to use people. I mean, you, you know, when you're playing with weaker players and I, and I give you a ball and I don't get it back. I know I'm not giving it to you again. <laughs> I'm going to use the wall to get around the next player. So you learn things in the game. How, how, how can I protect the ball against someone like you? Look how big you are to me. I need to protect it. How? So, I, so you learn all of the things that I'm playing against my little brother and he was small, smaller than me. So every time I, I come up against him, he gave me the confidence to take him on every time because I knew I was better than him at the time. But I wouldn't have learned that in a, in a coaching environment or a club coaching environment. Farah, so what about your first England cap? Like, what's the feeling when it comes to that, man? Talk to us. Yeah, it's mad because when I got the, the youth cap, so when I'm under 16, like that in itself, opening a letter and you've been selected, it's like, oh, wow, like you're running around the house, like showing mum and whatever. I never told any of my school friends when I played under 18s or under 16 England. So when I was in school doing that, no one knew I played for England. I just didn't feel like an England player until I, I made the seniors. Wow. Yeah, so I didn't tell them, but I was on an under 18 What's camp. What's wrong with you? Yeah, I was not an England player until you've made it. You've you got, you got to be playing senior football. I played for Great Britain at school. Yeah. And yeah. everyone knew. Yeah, right, trust they, me. Walking in the tracksuit, like, like, you see that, I right? Telling you them. See this, right? Imagine playing like youth level and then not making it, like, <laughs> and you're gassing yourself and you haven't made it. But I was coming back from an under 18 tournament and I arrived at the same hotel the seniors met up at and they were like, they had a few injuries and Hope said to me, like, do you want to stay in camp? And I'm like, me stay for like, they had a double header away to Portugal and then home to Portugal. And I was like, yeah, but. I need clean underwear because we've been away in camp for two weeks and we don't get our clothes washed on international duty with the women, not back then. So you've got to take enough to last you for the two weeks. <laughs> I was like, and I left all my wash stuff. I didn't want to put it in my bag, like out in Denmark. Don't worry, we'll sort it out. They got it, me. Mum, I've been asked to stay with the seniors. I ain't coming home for another two weeks. And that was it. And I stayed, went to Portugal away. How old are you at this time? 17. Went to Portugal away and I got 20 minutes. And I was like, and I used to think I was good, right? I come on for 20 minutes and I was blowing out of my backside. Yeah, I'm like, and Portugal weren't a high ranked team then. Adrenaline? I don't know. I was like, man, is this, is this the levels between under 18s to seniors? And I was blowing. And on the return fixture at home, I was starting. And I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't last 20 minutes. How am I going to start the game? And uh, it was at Fram Park, so Portsmouth uh, Stadium, straight down the A3 from where I grew up. So I had all my family, friends from come the estate. On. And That's I told them yes. I'm making my home you know, debut for England. And I actually scored a free kick. So. It was nice that then I could tell them I'm in the seniors and they were able to be there and, and see me score my first goal. All right, Farah, I think it's on you. Do you want to introduce our guest? We have a special guest, a European Championship winner from the Lionesses, Rachel Daly. Rachel Daly. Come on, welcome, come on, come welcome, on, come welcome, on, come welcome, on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You could, have, you could have done yourself up or something. <laughs> this is the nicest I've looked in months. <laughs> How you doing, Rachel? You good? Good, thank you. How are you? Doing great, thank you very much, man. I'm loving the outfit as well. Thank you. Proper stylish, man. Yeah, don't tell that. Don't gas up. You didn't say that about me. I say that about you every week, though, Farah. Every week. I know. I didn't know it was that kind of event, but yeah. Um, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Farah. Um, this girl, right? Let me just tell you about this girl. <laughs> I told them before she came, and they were like, "What's she like?" And I said, "All I can tell you, she's got a mad resting bitch face." And look at you. Look at her. You're on camera, girl, man. Smile. You, you you're just a European, me, you you're a European champion. To this girl's you're a European champion. I want you to smile and talk to us about the Euros. And, and I am smiling. And how exciting was the Euros for you this summer? Um, somebody asked me to describe it today and I said, euphoric. My voice is going, by the way. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> um, and I would say euphoric because I actually can't put it into words how I felt. I think I felt every single emotion, crying, laughing, actually smiling. She smiled. She did smile. I'll give you that. And she don't smile often, guys. So when you get one... <laughs> was there a moment in the tournament where you thought, we might do this? Yeah, yeah I think... I think we all had like a belief that we would, um, but more of a, a real genuine belief. I think in the past we probably said that we've had that belief, but never really believed it. You know, we just said it. Um, but I think there was a genuine belief throughout the whole group. But I think the turning point was the Spain game. Um, I think that's when we kind of knew like to come back against a team like that 
in that kind of a game. I was going to say, like, you know, like when you play at international football, right, what happens? You come from like, what's the norm at home, like club environment. Yeah. And international football, they try and change your daily routine. And it sounds like you lot's kind of routine, away, apart from being away from home, pretty much felt like you was at home in terms of the freedom to do stuff. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, because I think when we left, it actually felt weirder being on the outside than the inside. <laughs> Creep. <laughs> it felt like I was on like Love Island or something. You come up, you go in, you, as a, it? you go in as a nobody, and then you come out as somebody. Um, but well, life, life outside of that little bubble we were in was boring for a few weeks. Yeah. And I think it's because we actually really just enjoyed each other's company. So you're talking about enjoying each other's company, but what did you actually do? Because I think that's that's so important. You know what I mean? Because obviously, in order to have success, the good vibes. What are you doing? Like break it down. Well, we played a lot of volleyball, which is weird, but like everyone got involved. So it wasn't just like four or five of us. Like there was one day, I think it was like 12 v 12. But we had a games room, which was like actually a fun games room where everyone was on TV. So we'd watch all the Euros Mate, they had together. everything. Some really? of the clips that come out on that Lioness uh, Instagram, they had, you know, the, the, the basketball thing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, in arcade games, you name yeah, it, they had great. it. Got treated like royalty. Well, you know? great. The, the spirit within the camps, is one of the most underrated things for tournament football. Germans in 2014 had that getaway that they had in Brazil and they all talked about playing tech ball and, and table tennis together. And it's, it's got to be those sorts of things that you're describing now that really bring a team together that makes you forget the pressures. Because being a home nation in the tournament with all the, the, the scrutiny that comes with that as well. And obviously the, the men getting to the final and falling at the last hurdle the year before that must have been some serious pressure for you. We, we actually genuinely were in this bubble. Like, it was weird to say that, but we didn't have Sky Sports News. We weren't allowed the TVs on in and around the hotel. Like, no Sky Sports News, like, no BBC News. Nothing. Whose decision was that? Serena. Right. So she didn't want any distractions of that. Like, you didn't hear me, like, slating you, No, so yeah. see, if we'd, have, if we'd have finished the game and turned Sky Sports News on, Cara would be saying, she's not, not very good. Yeah, yeah. That's not true. That's not true. You lot got hype from me. So she Apart didn't... from one game, what game do you think that was? Spain. No, nah, yeah, that was your poor first half, but you was poor first half. Uh, Northern oh, Ireland. Me no, your team, I was the, the, no, the team was collectively, half in Spain. you didn't get near them. But that's the game you rode yeah. your luck. But, but Northern Ireland in the first half. Yeah, tough. You lot deserved to be dug out because you let your standards drop without yeah, Serena. Yeah, we did. That's what I felt as a... It's because Serena wasn't there. That's what I said. See? <laughs> My you question like, is, after the Euros, what's it been like? Like you said, you come in, it kind of feels like Love Island. What's different? Like, what are they saying to you now when they see you? How's your lifestyle changed? She's got a pretty little thing deal. She's know, got how, <laughs> how is it? I come to these events all the time now. Yeah. Um, car. It's really different. I think, um, for me, it's really different because I moved home. So everything changed straight after the Euro. So I was in America for 10 years and I moved my whole life back home. So that was an instant change. But it's like silly little things that just like getting recognised, like, 10 weeks before that, that never would have been just been recognised in the street. Like you'd get obviously at games and like sporting events and things like that, but never in the streets, I don't, I don't think. And now I like moved to Birmingham, obviously to play for Villa and it, I get recognised all the time. Can't walk your local. Can't go and get your loaf for milk. <laughs> no, listen, I went to being in bargains the other day to buy my cock a lead and got stopped three times. Um, so yeah, I think it's things like that. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, coming to events and stuff like that. Everyone kind of wants a piece of you. Um, don't really get any off days anymore. You know, coming away from the Euro, so obviously you was out in the US, successful out there, and you went out there to obviously better yourself and, and you felt at the time that league was better than WSL, but you've come back, obviously scoring goals, look like you're, you're playing with a smile, but how have you settled back and what changes do you think's happened in that? Was it five years you was away for, was it, Rach? No, so I, did, I did three and a half years at uni there and then six and a half wow, in the league. Wow, you longer than I thought. Yeah, so it's So you left as a baby years. and come back as a woman. Yeah, <laughs> a lot How, what's, what's the differences now within the league, do you feel? Um, I know it's early on, but... Yeah, I think, obviously I've watched the league over the past few years. Like I've watched my friends play and kept up to date with the league and it really... Oh, so I'm still getting over you were there that long, I didn't even realise. Carry on, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I think the competitiveness in this league is a lot higher than I thought it would be. Because uh, in America, anyone can beat anyone on any day, I think. Mm. Whereas here, it was kind of like you've got your top three, then you've kind of got like the middle pack, and then you've got the battle of relegation. Rach but had a blinder in the opening game against City. 
pretty much. If it wasn't for her, they probably wouldn't have won the game. But scored the absolute worldie. It's a team game. Yeah, it's yeah. Team yeah. <laughs> You're right. They were two to up, three two City, and then they brought it back in, and, and Rachel got the winner. But yeah, they had a great game. But yeah, it I think this this t this league is is so strong now because there's so many players from everywhere. Back when we back when we, we used to play against each other in you know, Liverpool and Lincoln and things like that, like the level was nowhere near there, was it? It was like absolutely nowhere near there. And now you're paying hundreds of thousands of pounds for players. Not that me. Much, that Not much, me. Uh, Not no, me. She's just got a big move. Not let me. me. Let me let these, tell these guys. So basically she plays, played in America as a striker, yes. right? Yeah. She has now returned from America and plays for a club team as a striker. She's just got player of the month, three goals, two games, but still in the national team. She's seen as a left back. Left back. You have a retired centre forward, wow. an injured centre forward. Be honest, how does that make you feel? And is it frustrating at times? I know look, it's hard when you're a versatile player, yeah. but like, let us into a little bit of like what that feels like, because I get you take one for the team, but at some point... Yeah, so it isn't as seamless of a transition as what everyone makes it out to be. Like first few days of camp, I always struggle getting my feet at left back and mm. defending again. And I'm not, you know, pressing from the front. And I like to think that a pressing game is Good. Quite good. So say then, it, say it. You're a you're European champion. <laughs> national you can treasure. say you're good. <laughs> no, but I think, I think for, in the standpoint of it's natural. Mm. And I, I've not really exposed myself to that at this level. So Have you had those conversations with Serena? Do you have those conversations? Have you had that conversation? Because she's quite open. Answer, no, I'm just asking here. because when asked about it, I would say like, for me, I thought in that game, Ellen White's retired. Russo's gone home injured. Mm. In my head, as my, my coaching head, I'm thinking, right, Rachel Daly gets an opportunity. Yeah. Scored three and two and you're going into camp. So you're buzzing. And then I'm seeing you at left back and Hempy, who's a naturally left-sided player, down the middle. Yeah, she had a conversation with me before the first game um, and said that for the balance of the team and the way the team was at, that she wanted me to play left back. So, of course, do whatever to play. Um, and then, obviously, the second game I didn't play, but came on in the nine in the front two. Um, but it was kind of chasing the game, you know, last 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, she, she, she's had conversations with me about keeping her eye on me in that position in the league. Um, so I think I've just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, you know what? I've got a question for the two of you. The WSL. How happy are you that EA, right, are like they're investing more into the WSL? It's taken a long time for the game to get where it is. It's gradually been growing, but I think in terms of really growing it after the Euros, I think they become household names. I know when I went home to my nephews, they were singing the Russo and Ella Toon song. So that obviously shows what, what they did in the summer. What this game does, though, is give all these gamers, all the kids that learn about the game and the individual players, like they do in the men. Like when I need to know about Inter Milan, AC, whoever, I go to my nephews because they know everybody. This gives them an opportunity to really understand the players' strengths and weaknesses through FIFA. I don't think so, people really fully understand, you know, what the gaming sort of community ah, brings to the more, knowledge of the, the game. The knowledge of players, yeah. more than anything, the individual players. I mean, I'm not too sure about the rankings, but we'll go into that a little bit later. But in terms of the game, I think it takes our game to the next level. You think this game is global, worldwide. So they'll be recognised across the globe, just off of, based off of a game. What about yourself? I'll get to see that mug on it now. Yeah. If I'm going to play it, I'll She's know not to play oh, to or against Villa. Why is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me straight away. Um, yeah, I think the same. And, you know, you, you meet kids or you've got kids in the family and they're like, are you on FIFA? And I'm like, yeah, I am now. Mm. Um, I am now. But in the past, I'm like, yeah, yeah maybe. I just have a look. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I think like, and obviously when I was growing up, I played FIFA and you play the team that you support or you play with your favourite players. And, you know, you look up to people like Farrow when you're younger and we didn't have that on a platform, on a gaming platform. We just had men. So it's nice now, I think, for the girls to see that they can play with their role models. They, they get insights to the games and even boys as well. Like Farah said, the nephews, you know, they start to talk about the women's game, talk about the WSL. And then, you know, even that shows more interest in the actual league and people want to start coming to games, which obviously gets a rise in attendance, which we need. The Women's French League is added to FIFA 23 as well. And also the Women's Champions League is coming soon on FIFA 23. I mean, honestly, it's just changing everything at the moment, you know, so... Do you know what your rankings are? I know 84 or something. I think I am. I'm 98. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, the I, just year went, she retired. I just went along the carpet there and they were like, where would you rate yourself? I started on like 84. And by the time I got for everybody, I was at 98. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I was just telling them. My mum's just got in the twos by the time I get a lot. By the time I get you are, we do have your ratings. Oh, cool. And uh, 
we're going to see where you're ranked uh, in relation to Ella Toon. Uh, and we've got a few different ratings. So, so, do you think you're higher or lower overall? Lower. You're actually higher. Oh, Ella's 83. Yeah. <laughs> she knew that. She just wanted me to do I didn't that. Know that. <laughs> trying to be humble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, you, your pace is 79. Is it higher? I'm definitely faster than Tooney. Is it higher or lower than Lucy Bronze? Uh, lower. Yeah, Lucy's a bit of a speed demon. 89 she's got. Power, in it. She's powerful. She is an athlete. Mm. So are you. Not right. Like Millie so Bright's no. passing, 71. What? Are you higher or lower than Millie Bright for passing? Lower. Higher, 76. Millie Bright, 71, passing. We've seen her ping a diag. That's a libby. <laughs> who's, who's picking that? All right, we've got dribbling. You're 83 for dribbling. Decent. Are you higher or lower than Chloe Kelly? Lower. Yeah, only just though. Chloe's 85. Wow. Uh, your shooting's 84, which is pretty That's good. That's decent. Uh, are you higher or lower than Alessia Russo? Lower. Can't be. Higher. Yeah, yeah higher. Higher. That's your thing, man. You're a striker. So she. <laughs> You've been playing longer, more experience. Pretty solid ratings overall. Decent. Seriously solid ratings I'll overall. I'll take that. I'm not having a Millie Bright 71 for passing. You know what? I want to say thank you very much for joining us. Thank You've you for having me. Absolutely fantastic. We even got a smile out of her, so that's brilliant. Yeah. You need, to leave, you need to leave her alone. She's if been she's smiling so the whole time. Well, this is what she does. True. She says things like this and then expects me to smile. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm really happy Try to remember that. Try to remember that. Really? Good time of her life. Right, look. Yep, thank you very much for tuning in. Yes. And, right. um, let us know if you've been playing the game, if you've been playing with the ladies, how mm -hmm. do you think it's been going? We want to give a massive shout out to EA Sports. We're here to celebrate the Women's Football Summit. And yes, make sure you stay tuned. Vibe with Fire, we'll be back soon. Joel Bayer, Stephen Houston, Farrah Williams, Rachel Daly, signing out. Peace.